What's up you guys? I am in the garden as you can tell in our arched uh, trellis for our, where our squashes and our green beans and things are growing and oh my gosh they have taken over. So today we're going to be doing our uh, weekly garden tour update but we're also going to be putting up our tomato trellis. Now it's not a cattle panel trellis. Um, I know some people can't get cattle panels. This is actually a very simple trellis that anyone can make and it's going to really maximize the height of your tomatoes. So as you might be able to see behind me, the tomatoes are huge. They're blowing up. They're starting to lay over. I'll show you guys. So it is long time for me to get these up off the ground and trellis them because they're laying on the ground. You can see some pest pressure here. They've been pests have been getting to them. That's I'm not too worried about that because those bottom leaves are coming off. So, but I'll show you guys how I am going to be trellising our tomatoes. Now, in our old garden, we had a trellis that I really, really liked. Um, it was set up in a kind of a tent, tent frame almost, and I loved it. It worked beautifully. But the problem that I had with it was that the legs blocked the entrance to the row, and I kind of was over stepping over them so I kind of reimagined the trellis um, took some pointers from some other youtubers and built up my own inspiration um, unfortunately I originally wanted to use eight foot tall T posts but with the shortages going on right now I can't find eight foot T posts anywhere uh, tractor supply can't even get them in the manufacturer I guess isn't sending them out so the tallest ones I could get was six feet tall and that just wasn't tall enough for me. So we got we got the five foot T posts, and I'm going to show you what else we got that we need to use. Okay, so basically, I had considered doing the Florida weave method um, for trellising my tomatoes. And the way that the Florida weave method works is uh, depending upon um, your length of your row. But basically, you would set T posts or stakes every uh, three to four plants, or even less, and you would take jute or twine and you would wrap it around one t-post, weave it in between the tomatoes, wrap around the next t-post and continue down and then back through and you would basically create this kind of almost like a, a netting, not quite a netting, but basically every few feet you would run strands on both sides across and that would help hold the uh, tomatoes up. Um, I didn't want to do that because I don't, first off, don't want to use that my t-posts, but I also had the problem where we're growing indeterminate tomatoes. That method is excellent for determinate tomatoes. And it can work for indeterminate tomatoes, but I want to maximize the growth because once my tomatoes get to a certain height, they're going to outgrow that trellis and fall over. And uh, I'd really like to give my tomatoes the chance to get to six or even eight feet tall so I can maximize my harvest. I know, I'm a little ambitious. I'm small. I'm going to use a stepping stool to harvest my tomatoes. So what we're going to do is we're going to be taking um, T-posts at each end of our row and uh, we were going to try and do 10 feet but it's just it's too flimsy so we're going to do it in 8 foot sections. So at each end we're going to have, we're going to, we have 10 foot PVC pipes, we're going to cut them down to 8 feet and then we're going to mount them onto the T-posts and then we're going to run 3 sections of 8 feet um, uh, pieces of PVC. Um, now, it probably would be better if we used uh, metal conduit, but um, I'm going to try it with PVC first and see if that can work. But, I mean, it'll be an experiment um, to see if we can do this. I got, like I said, I got the thick wall. I didn't know if we had a means of cutting the conduit. That was my only concern on why I didn't get conduit because they wouldn't cut it at the store and most people don't have a way of cutting that stuff. So I'm gonna try it with PVC pipe and hopefully it works. Just because I brought the legs in a little bit further out, I've kind of misjudged it on the length. So I should have cut it a little bit, but that's fine. We're good for now. 
So I cut the bottom, let me show you guys. So the base of each of these is cut with a kind of a, a spike, kind of like slant cut, so that I could stake them in the ground just to give them some further security. So these middle ones, while they aren't anchored with a T-post, they're still stuck in the ground by at least a few inches. And then the ends are actually anchored. They're not only stuck in the ground, but they're further anchored with the T-post. So this should work. Oh, this is gonna look good. All right, let's get these, let's start working on tying up these tomatoes. Got my scissors and um, you can use twine uh, or jute or ute, jute ute, I don't know what this is. But um, this is, uh, I found this at Tractor Supply. It's a uh, two rolls of 500 foot jute and what I liked about it is it's biodegradable so um, I'm not worried about it not breaking down. Though honestly, um, it's not like it's gonna be able to use with tomatoes like I can really put it in the compost you're gonna to want to burn it because you always want to burn your tomatoes at the end of the season you don't want to put those in the compost because you can transmit diseases so um, but either way I still feel better about this so we're gonna go ahead and start staking these tomatoes and uh, I'll go in after I've done it and show you guys just how I did it So it's the next morning, um, as you could tell by the end of that video, uh, we got rained out and I had to put the camera up, but we got the trellises up, we got the tomatoes staked, and I'm going to go through now and give you guys the garden tour and show you guys how exactly I trellis these tomatoes. So we're going to flip things around, normally I start with the strawberries and sparrows because we're going to go backwards. So first we're going to start off here to check in on the okra. Now originally I was going to plant a full row of okra, but I decided because I didn't realize that ground cherries, because I planted ground cherries at the end of the tomatoes, I didn't realize they really just grow bush out. So we're going to have a half row of okra and a half row of ground cherries. So that we're going to transplant the ground cherries we grew with the tomatoes and put them there. And I've got some extra tomatoes that I started um, that are going to go where they were. So, but the okra are doing wonderfully. They are starting to get taller, sending out more leaves. You can see some of the new growth coming in here. And uh, I'm excited about that. So the okra is doing good. I did have, uh, as you can see, something ate the leaves. I don't know what exactly. Oh, there we go. There's our culprit. That's a little worm. So we've been clearing out a lot of these. We fed a bunch of these to our chickens. Don't mind my fingers. Um, that's actually staining from the tomatoes. I've washed my hands multiple times and it just kind of builds up. Um, I had to finish staking some of them this morning. So that's fresh from, from this. So our kale is doing good. Get out of the way. Kale's doing really well. Um, unfortunately the spinach kind of died out. They dried out. It wasn't anything because of that. But uh, honestly, it's really hot for spinach. Uh, the Swiss chards coming in, even the seedlings that we planted, those are coming in. Cabbage. Now, this is kind of a uh, back and forth. You can see pest damage on some of the outer leaves. Um, the onions are, are just doing beautifully. They're coming in really thick and strong. Um, maybe I just don't have enough. Maybe that was just a lucky year because there is some, as you can see, there's some, there's some pest damage in here. And so I don't know, um, but as you can see, there's, there's pest damage in here. So I don't know if, uh, let me see if I can find any of whatever it is. I'm going to assume it's cabbage worms or it might be more of those little green worms that I just, I just picked off one of those. Look at all that water that's just been residing on this plant to water it. That's so cool. So let's see, any under here? But I mean, if they chew up the outer leaves a little bit, oh, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. That's, there it is. That's the bad guy. Let's go ahead and get him off. And uh, so maybe I am gonna have to come in here with BT and spray this. 
Um, we'll see. We'll see. I'll see if I can find somewhere to get BT to spray these out. Yep, there's another. Other than that, onions are coming in beautifully. Our bulbing and our bunching. And uh, we've even got some young ones that I had planted after the fact. You can see them coming in here. And um, I'm actually kind of thinking, I've got some extra marigolds. What if I tried planting marigolds in this in between right here? Maybe try that. Maybe that might help. Uh, another concern that I think might also be the reason why there was such heavy pest pressure in here was that these tomatoes that were laying, they were all laying down here and they were heavily infested with uh, caterpillars. And uh, we went through and pruned and cleaned up them and got pulled out a lot of caterpillars. So maybe that might be why they were so heavily loaded down is just because they were all just right there. It was just a big, huge pile of leafy greens for them to eat. Another thing I'm noticing is this all season cabbage is holding up better to the pests than the cordy blue. The cordy blue is, uh, and this was a Baker Creek seed. They're really hitting this one pretty hard. Um, so maybe I'm, I might not get any this year, but we'll try in the fall. We'll try in the fall. We'll try growing more of this when it's actually better to grow cabbage. This is kind of an experimental crop. You guys, look at this. See that? That is garlic. I planted a whole row of garlic with old cloves and I didn't think they were gonna pop up. And they are. Look at all that garlic. Look at this. This makes me happy. It is so nice and neat. I came in, I pruned out some of the excess leaves just to provide good airflow to the plants. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show you guys just how I trellis these exactly. So basically what I did is I took up here, I looped through. I just kind of like tied a little circle at the end. And I looped through and I brought it straight down. Now basically the, what I'm gonna be doing with this is I anchored it at the base here. You can see, oh, if I can zoom in. I anchored it here at the base and then I twisted. Basically I'm ro rolling, twisting the plant around the string as it grows and this is going to really help this is eight feet tall that's going to give me i'm going to maximize my tomato growth because i'm not going to have to top my tomatoes they can continue to grow to eight feet and then flop over and that'll be fine they can flop over and then i'll maybe i'll top them then and let them focus on but look at all these look at all these flowers coming in there is so much fruit getting ready to come in and actually you can see here look look at these tomatoes these are brad's atomic grape tomatoes coming in we've got let's see where else oh we got some of these um these are pear tomatoes we got some pear tomatoes coming in look at all these pear tomatoes i am excited and these are just regular yellow pear. These are chocolate pear. Look at all these tomatoes that I'm about to be getting. And look at how good the Amish paste tomatoes are. They, they really lagged behind. Like the other tomatoes grew twice as tall as them. But look, you can hardly tell. They've caught up almost completely. All the other ones, you've got some that are taller than the others. But these ones have really caught up. Now, earlier I was talking about, I'm gonna be moving my cherry to my uh, ground cherries over. These are the ground cherries. Let me move this dill out of the way. Get out of there. These are the ground cherries. And look, look at all these little blossoms coming in. Oh, out of focus. Look at all these little blossoms coming in. We're about to be having some ground cherries coming in soon. So I need to get those transplanted quick. But just look at all these tomatoes that we are gonna be harvesting from soon. That is so exciting. The trellis as you can see is just, I mean, look at this. That is just, the squash has just completely taken over the trellis. I'm thinking down the road when we finish off the garden, I might have, I definitely wanna have at least two trellises, but what if I took, cause our garden, whenever we build the house, it's gonna be fenced in with a, uh, um, a what was it gonna be? A, um, a hedge of blueberry bushes because I love blueberries and what if I had a trellis like this 
and that was the entrance to the garden and I had just this really long tunnel that you could walk through to get to the garden and it was all squash and then in the garden we'd have a trellis this size of just green beans and then maybe another trellis of something else. So I definitely am thinking that I want to do a whole trellis of just green beans because the squash are kind of taking over and stretching over to where the green beans are growing and kind of starting to shade them but it's not hindering them they're still growing I'll show you guys. Look at this. This is just dreamy. I am just loving this and yet look at that that is our first pumpkin coming in it's starting to ripen um, and as you might notice it's a little bit less crowded in here I actually came in because since these reached up to the top all the under leaves are starting to die back because they were no longer reaching Sun so they're not benefiting the plant so I went ahead and pruned them out and it kind of helped circulate help better with the airflow limit hiding places for bugs I am definitely gonna have to come in here and uh, spray some sort of pesticide, organic pesticide, so to speak, in here. I'm not as worried about it originally. I was very hesitant because of potential honeybees, but we really have not seen any honeybees out here. And until we get honeybees out here, um, I just don't think it's, I, I don't, I'm not too, as worried about it because of course it's not something that's gonna linger. It's something that you're spraying and killing them at the same time. But like, see here, look. I think I saw them, where did they go? I saw some squash bugs in here, which is driving me insane, these squash bugs, out there they are. See them right there. Y'all are bad, get out of here. So, but look at this, look at this. That's a watermelon. That is a moon and stars watermelon coming in. I'm, hope, I'm hoping we actually get watermelon for once. Now these are pretty heavy and the because the, uh, the vine that grows them is not as thick as the squash vines are. We're gonna likely, we're gonna need to provide some sort of support for that. That's something I'll be doing here soon. And then let's see if we got anything else. So we got this pumpkin. We've got that pumpkin coming in and doing wonderfully. And then let's see, I'm not seeing many other pumpkins right now. We had uh, some problem with some caterpillars getting into them and they've had to be pulled unfortunately but also a lot of problem with pollination but pollination I think is improving because look at that that is a loofah there's a loofah there's a loofah we got loofah starting to come in all over the place right now little tiny ones let me see if I can find another little tiny one coming in there's a little tiny one starting to come in I'm excited for loofah because I like to have sponges. That would be cool if I could just grow my own sponges. So there's the loofah, and it is coming in, so that's kind of like a comparison. Let me say this compared to my hand. That is the size of it, and they'll get pretty big. Davis's tiny little peas, they're just not faring well, which I didn't think so they would, unfortunately. I was hoping that they would, but they just aren't. It was just so late they can't get to the sun now this one's pretty much dying something might probably gotten that this one's dying this one's still trying so I mean maybe maybe it will I just it's not grabbing on I keep trying to train it over to that but look at that look at all those beans look at all these beans coming in this is the 1500 year old cattle bean or 1500 year, 1500 year old cave bean and uh, these are uh, for use in uh, their dry beans so we're gonna let these, uh, I gotta do my research on how to harvest dry beans, but look at them all coming in. They're all over the place. So that is awesome. Beans are doing great. Over here, the purple potted bean. Look at how pretty those flowers are. They finally came in. All the ones that we replanted, they came in. I think that the original seeds that we started were just old, old, they just, we're too old. Oh, look, another loofah coming in right here. But look at how cute these are, how pretty these flowers are. I love the purple potted beans. So hopefully here soon, we'll start getting some purple beans coming in. But like, just look at how the loofah's kind of taking over. The loofah, the pumpkin, it's all growing over this way. So here we've got the um, Blue Lake pole bean. 
Let me see if we've got any. Look at here's the blossoms coming in. Oh, really, really bright there. Starting to come out of the shade. So there's some of the blossoms coming in. Let's see if we've got any beans starting to come in yet. I'm not seeing any beans quite yet. But soon, soon those will reach over this little area over here. And they'll still even climb under the squash. They're still climbing under the squash. And then here is the Kentucky Wonder. Now I think I saw some Kentucky Wonder beans, green beans starting to come in. So let's take a peek under here. Let's see, do we have any Kentucky Wonder beans coming in? Oh, I'm not seeing any quite yet. None yet. Yeah. Soon they will start to come in, but none quite yet. But we got blossoms all over the place right now. Look at this. There's the blossoms. They're so pretty. I, lo I love green bean blossoms. They're so cute. So on the outside here is our two Roma tomatoes. And you can't really see them all that well because they're kind of hidden. But under the foliage, look at those tomatoes coming in. There's a bunch on this side. Look at them all. And then also over here as well. Got a bunch hidden under there. But I am just, I couldn't be happier. I mean, I could be happier if the squash bugs would just go away. <laughs> Hi, buddy. <laughs> I bet I scared the viewers. Yeah, you think you scared the viewers? <laughs> So onto the strawberry and asparagus patch. Hi goats. Goat break. Hmm. No. Your <laughs> so they are cute. Alright, so the magnolias have gotten yeah, magnolias. Why did I say that? The marigolds. Leon's marigolds have gotten huge. And they are they've kind of created a perimeter around the strawberries. So here's the strawberries. The strawberries are doing beautifully. They're sending out runners. Oh, something happened here. Something broke off the leaves. I wonder what it was. The asparagus is doing awesome. I mean, just look at, look at how huge that is. I am eager for next season. Size comparison. Watch where you're stepping. Let's see, there's, that's one, that's one of, I think that might be our tallest one that had grown. That's still ferning out. That's okay. The, the squash grab onto things. Look at that strawberry under there, though. Look at how huge that plant is. We oh, definitely. Don't stop well, we want to let them get established. Oh, look, Leon. <gasps> There's one of your marigolds. Let's see how it smells. Can you smell it? Doesn't smell as good as the one over there. Oh. Okay. Come on. He says there's a smell, really smelly good marigold over here. Mm. Ah, smell it. Mm. Don't pick it out. Mmm, does smell good. And those will help with the pests. So maybe marigolds, we have a better luck growing. The problem that I'm having with the flowers for, that are supposed to keep the tear the squash bugs is that they're just not blooming. I planted them much later than I should have. So let's see if we have anything to harvest. I haven't checked today. We've been harvesting things here and there. So let's see. That one's still growing. That's still growing. Um, no zucchini yet. Watch out, buddy. Let me check. No zucchini. Ooh, look, Leon, look. We got a cucumber, buddy. Look at that. Look at that cucumber. Let's you twist need it. Oh. No, this is a cucumber. Look at that, Leon. That's pretty that cute. That's huge. Spike. Look at how long that is. That is a nice long cucumber. One. One two, long cucumber. Three. Four. Five. Five feet. Oh, five feet. <laughs> Not exactly, buddy. All right, hold the cucumber. 
Let's see. I don't think we have any other cucumbers. That's that's probably one of the that's the only cucumber that actually got pollinated. That's what, and that's what we're struggling with. Just cucumber sword. I got cucumber sword. Ha. But that's what we're struggling with is just the po the poor pollination. We're just I, I, I'm going to until we get honeybees out here, I'm probably going to have to hand pollinate a lot of things, which I really did not want to have to do. So, but we'll see. Um We've got, oh, look here. Here's another cucumber coming in. Another cucumber coming in. So hopefully that one will be come to fruition. So maybe I'll just make a cucumber cream cheese sandwich. Those are really good. I love cucumber cream cheese sandwiches. So that is how things are doing in the garden. Um, definitely learning new things this year. I mean, this is the first time we've grown anything out here. So I wouldn't know, I wouldn't really, know. I'm still learning. But I mean, so far I'm pretty happy. We're still getting more harvest out of any squash that we've ever gotten. We've never been able to successfully get any squash in our old garden. So this is exciting. I mean, cucumber, let me see that cucumber. <laughs> Thank you, I mean, that's awesome. That is so cool, we've never been able to grow a cucumber successfully. So I am really excited to be getting stuff. And you wanna try something? I'll definitely keep you guys updated on this, but I hope that you liked the tr the tomato trellis. I This has actually been my favorite way to trellis tomatoes. And I've done this for, this is my second year doing it. I've tried the tomato cage. I hate the tomato cage. They, are, they don't work at all. They might work for determinate varieties of tomatoes, but they've just never worked for me. Um, you could grow them up a arch trellis like this, like, um, like uh, Jess from Roots and Refuge, she grows them like this. But I just didn't have enough of them and it's kind of expensive and some people don't have access to cattle panels like this. So, I mean, PVC pipe, everyone has access to PVC pipe. That's a definite and that was not hard. I mean, me and a seven-year-old did it, so. You might wanna get primer and cement. Yes, definitely get PVC primer and PVC cement. That is a must, you cannot do it without. I'll see you guys next time.